Hello all, welcome to the lecture on reading data. So, in this lecture we are going to look different file formats and what are the commonly used file formats, how do we read them into SPIDER. And the commonly used file formats that we will be looking into this lecture is .csv format, the .xlsx format and the .txt format. We will see in detail about each and every data format on how to read them into SPIDER. So, now we will see what is the format of file. It is just a standard way in which the data is collected and stored and we know that most commonly used format for storing the data is the spreadsheet format where the data will be stored in rows and columns and where you see each row will be called as a record or a sample and each column will be represented as a variable. And each column in a spreadsheet holds data belonging to the same data type. And the commonly used spreadsheet formats are comma separated values and excel sheets. There are so many other formats where we can do analytics on that. But since this course is driven towards data science, we will be predominantly looking at how to work with comma separated values and excel sheets. So, this lecture will be driven towards the file formats like text. Se uh, comma separated values in excel sheets. As I mentioned there are other formats like plain text files, json files, html files, mp3 files, mp4 etcetera. So, all these formats can be read into spider and you can do any analysis on that based on the requirement. But in this course we will be looking at how to deal with the spreadsheet formatted files like comma separated values in excel sheets. So, now let us see comma separated values. Comma separated values can be stored in a spreadsheet format and the format being represented here is CSV where it is just the abbreviation of comma separated values. So, whenever you see a spreadsheet with the extension dot CSV then you call them as comma separated values. So, in this case each record is separated by a comma, but there are other ways where the record can also be separated. So, the files where records are separated using a tab are called tab separated values and the .csv files can also be opened with a notepad or the Microsoft Excel. So, let us see how it looks whenever we open the comma separated values in a notepad. So, this is how it will look like whenever you open the csv files, the .csv files using the notepad. So, you see all the records here but you would not be able to differentiate between which is the row and which is the column and which cell belongs to which variable. So, that is the problem with viewing the .csv file using the notepad. However, you can also view the .csv file using the notepad as well as excel sheet. So, now we will see how it looks like whenever you open any .csv files in a excel sheet. The same data has been stored in a different format like every data has been stored in a tabular fashion where it has been represented in terms of rows and columns and each row is representing samples and each columns are representing the variables. Here we have few variables like sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width and the other being the species and you have three records being shown up here. So, now we have seen about the comma separated values and what is the extension to it. And we have seen how to open those comma separated values using notepad and excel sheet. Next we will move on to excel spreadsheets. It is also a spreadsheet format. It is a part of Microsoft office. So, if you have a Microsoft office in your machine then you will be able to work with excel and the format would be dot excel sx. So, whenever you save any spreadsheet with the extension dot excel sx then that becomes the excel spreadsheets. So, this is the snippet on how it will look like whenever you save any records using the dot xlsx extension. So, this also gives you the same flavor on how you open your csv file using excel. All the variables have been represented in terms of columns and all the samples have been represented in terms of rows. Next we will move on to text format. Till now we have been covering about the spreadsheet formatted files where we have seen the two types one is comma separated values and the other one is being excel sheets. Now we are going to move to text formats. 
text formats basically consist of plain text or records. So, whatever data which consists of plain text or records, we call them as text formatted data and the format would be with .txt extension. So, whenever you save any file with the extension .txt, then that becomes the text formatted data. So, this is the snippet to show you how a text formatted data will look like. So, in the previous example, you have been shown up with the data where you have rows and columns, but text file also can contain only plain text. But in this lecture, we will be completely focusing on how to read data from different formats like CSV and Excel. So, now we will see how to import the data. So, we are going to look how to import data into Spider. So, before importing data, you have to load or import the necessary libraries. The first library being OS. In order to import any library, we use the command import followed by the library name. So, we import OS library to change the working directory. There might be cases where you want to work with some data. In that case, you can basically change your working directory to wherever you have saved your data. So, that is why we imported the OS library and then we are importing the pandas library. So, basically we import pandas library to work with data frames. Whenever we read any data into Spyro, that becomes a data frame. That is what we call it as a data frame, where the data frames being represented in terms of a tabular fashioned data, where each row will be represented as sample and each column will be represented as a variable. So, that is why we are importing the pandas library as pd. So, here pd is just an allies to pandas. So, whenever I want to access any function from the pandas library, I can just use pd with the dot operator, I can use the other related functions. So, that is why I have used pandas as pd. Next, we have imported the OS library. So, using the OS library you and using the dot operator, I am using the function called chdir, which stands for changing directory. And inside the function, you just need to give the path of your file wherever it is lying on your drive or in your system. So, now let us see how to read a CSV file into spider. So, read underscore CSV is the command that is used to read any CSV files into spider, and that comes from the package called pandas. So, I have used pd dot read underscore CSV. Inside the function, you just need to give the file name, and the file name being iris underscore data underscore sample. And I have given the file name with the extension .csv and I have also given the file name within single quote. So, these two things are very mandatory to read any file into spider. One is the extension and one is single or double quotes and the other is enclosing the file name inside the single or double quotes. And if you see whenever I am reading, I am saving into an object called data underscore csv. Now, data underscore csv becomes data frame whenever you execute this line. And whenever you read any data into spider, all the blank cells will be read as NAN because there might be cases where you have some missing values in your data as a blank value. So, in that case, the Python will default all the blank values to NAN. So, that whenever you are going to use any function which is going to describe how many missing values are there in your record, then the NAN will account for that. So, this is just a screenshot of the data whenever you open it from your variable explorer tab. So, you have so many variables here starting from index to species and index being represented as the row labels starting from 0 to 4 here from the snippet and you have another column called unnamed colon 0 where the values are starting from 1 to 5. If you feel this represents an ID to each of the rows, then you can keep this column unwanted 0 because you do not want too many columns which have the same information to it. I want to keep the unnamed 0 column and I want to get rid of the index column. So, that I have some IDs to each of the observation that can be useful for the future analysis. So, let us see how to remove the unwanted column. So, if you want to remove the extra ID column, you can pass an argument called index underscore call is equal to 0 whenever you read a data frame. So, let us see how to do that. So, I have used the same command called pd dot read underscore csv inside the function I have given the file name followed by that I have given another argument called index underscore column is equal to 0. That means that I am making my first column as index column. In that case my index column 
would go and whatever I had it in the name of unnamed 0 that became the index column here. So, now you have 6 variables where the first variable represents the serial number or id for each and every records in your data frame iris data sample. So, this is how we read a csv file and this is how we also set your index column by specifying the column number here. So, if you see here there are special characters other than the numerical values like question marks and hash. These can be the representation of missing values but I have mentioned that all the blank values will only be replaced with NAND because in python by default all the blank values will only be replaced with NANDs not other special characters. But if you are sure that these special characters just represents the missing values in your data and if you want to consider them as NAND you can also do that by replacing all the question marks and hash as missing values. So, let us see how to do that. So, if you see all the junk values can be converted to missing values by passing them as a list to the parameters any underscore values. So, this can also be done whenever you read a data frame into spider. So, we are following the same command followed by the index call argument you have to just give any underscore values equal to a character which should be enclosed inside the square bracket that represents it is a list. So, I have first given question mark here that should be given in inside the single or double quotes then it takes it as a character and it will check those characters in the data frame and if there are any question marks in the data frame then it defaults that question marks to NAND values. So, this is what we want to do now. So, I have included any underscore values argument and inside the square bracket I have just given question marks. So, once I read this I will be able to get rid of all the question marks and that will be converted as NAND values. So, but in the in our case there are so many special characters that are representing the missing values. So, I can just give multiple values inside the square brackets so that all these values will be read as NAND. So, here I have just added the hash by using a comma. So, all the values have been treated as list here and it will check for these two values and replace all these special characters with the NAND value. So, now this is how we replace all those special characters and uh, which represents your missing values into NAND. So, read underscore excel is the command to read any excel sheet into spider and that also comes from the pandas library that is why we have used pd dot read underscore excel. Inside the function I have just given the file name with the extension dot xlsx. So, here the same file I am using with different formats. So, the extension being dot xlsx here and if you are dealing with excel spreadsheets then there might be cases where you have multiple tabs and the tabs being differentiated with different tab names. In that case if you want to access data from a separate tab then you can give the sheet name under the sheet underscore name argument. So, here iris underscore data is the sheet name from which I want to access the data frame. So, I have given iris underscore data and I have saved into an object called data underscore xlsx. Now, this becomes a data frame. So, there is a snippet from which you can get your sheet name. So, in your excel sheet you will have sheet names. So, you can just give the sheet name under the sheet underscore name argument. And here also since we are using the same data with different formats here also you have the problem with the question marks and hash which represents the missing values. So, you can follow the same steps here to get rid of those special characters and to convert them as none. So, let us do that also I have just included another argument called any underscore values where I have set the values to be converted as NAND and I have also set my first variable as the index column. So, now we have seen how to read excel file into spider. Next we are going to see how to import any text formatted data into spider. So, read underscore table is the command that is used to read any text format data that also comes from the pandas library and inside the function you just need to give the file name. Here the file name being iris underscore data underscore sample the same file that we are working with and the extension being dot txt. And I have also saved my data frame as data underscore txt 1. 
and once you read it this will be shown up in your variable explorer where you can see the name of your object is data underscore text 1 and the type of your object is data frame and the size being 150 rows and 1 column. So, 150 comma 1 represents rows and columns. So, there are 150 rows and only 1 column, but we know that we had 5 variables in our data frame. So, in this case it has been showed up with only 1 column let us see what is the problem because all the column have been read as a single column that is why the dimension is being 150 cross 1. So, now let us see how to encounter this problem if you see all the columns are read and stored in a single column of a data frame. So, in order to avoid this problem provide a delimiter to the parameters sep or delimiter let us see how to do that. So, the default delimiter is tab represented by slash t and let us see how to use those parameters. SEP is one of the parameters that is used to provide a delimiter. Here I have used the delimiter called tab. Even if you do not use tab here, by default it will always take the tab delimiter data, but I have specified the tab delimiter here that can be given using two separate arguments. One is SEP separator and another one is delimiter. So, you can use any one of it and the tab delimiter might not always work. Let us see what is the problem. The data is not a tab delimiter data that is why it is not working. The other commonly used delimiters are commas and blanks other than tabs. So, in this case using a comma as a delimiter also gives the earlier output right. In this case I have tried with a comma and that is also giving the same output where all the columns have been represented as a single column. So, now if we use a blank as a delimiter then let us see what happens. So, I have used blank space inside the double code that represents a delimiter as blank. So, if I try to read this I will be able to see the data has been read with 150 rows and 6 columns. So, now not the tab delimiter worked here and also the command did not work here and I have since I have used the blank delimiter the data has been read with 150 rows and 6 columns. So, you have to be really sure about your data and how many rows and how many columns it is expected to have and you will be able to cross verify that whether you got the correct data or not whenever you read it. So, now if you see here all the records have been separated by cells by using the blank delimiter. So, in this case also you have to remove the index column and replace all the question marks hash as missing values I have not shown here, but you can try that using the same format which you have used for CSV and Excel formats. Instead of using the read underscore table function you can also use read underscore CSV function which we use to read the CSV file. Now, I am trying to show you how to read a text file using the dot read underscore CSV command. So, you can use the same function that we used to do it whenever we want to import any CSV file into spider, but you have to just give the delimiter whenever you are reading any text file. That delimiter should correspond to the type of data that you have in your sheet. So, here our data is delimited by a blank and I have given the delimiter is equal to blank. So, now we have come to the end of the lecture we have where we have seen about importing different formats of data into spider. So, let us summarize whatever we have seen in this lecture. So, we have seen different formats of file, what are the formats of file that we will be looking into in this course and what are the commonly used file formats so that we can read those formatted files into spider. We have seen three formats of data, one being dot CSV format, we have seen how a comma separated values data will look like and we have also seen how to read them into spider. Followed by that we have seen how to read dot xlsx format, we have also seen how an excel sheet and how the data inside the excel sheet will look like. We have also seen how to read the text formatted data using both read underscore table command and read underscore csv command. So, on the whole we have seen how to read different formats of data into spider. Thank you.